Good afternoon, Seekers. I'm sorry this video is getting posted a little bit later than I would have liked today, but I have been very, very busy talking with many of your parents today and getting lots of things set up for our online learning that's going to officially, officially start on Thursday. So I've been hard at it and just decided finally, I think it's already past three o'clock, I'm finally sitting down to do some reading and I'll get that posted straight away. So I have a feeling this chapter is going to be the most exciting chapter of the entire book. It's slightly long, um, but it's going to be the only chapter I read today. And then tomorrow, all I'm going to be doing is reading the very last two short chapters, and then that's it. That's the end of the book. So today is our second to last read aloud for Superstar, and I will be reading you the very exciting, much anticipated chapter entitled The Kickball Game. All right, Seekers, here we go. When our class gets outside, we all stand along the fence inside the dugout while Ricky tells us the kicking lineup. When I call your name, Ricky yells, go sit on the bench in that order. He's first, then Connor, then Sydney. They go sit down. Then Michael Z, then Mona. I wait and wait and wait. Ricky calls more and more kids, but none of them are me. Finally, he calls Michael H, then Tori, and Abby. They all go sit down. Then Ricky goes and sits down. What about me? I yell at him. Oh, I must have forgotten about you, he laughs. You're last. Welcome to the Quarry Kickball Classic, Mr. Marmel yells into his megaphone. The kids in the bleachers cheer. And just like every year, the winning team will return to their classroom with the coveted Quarry Kickball Cup. Mr. Jacobson stands up in the front row of bleachers and holds the trophy up for everyone to see. It's gold like my science fair trophy, but twice as tall, and it's actually shaped like a cup. Now who's ready to play some kickball, Mr. Marmel says. Both classes cheer. Mrs. Rain's class, let's get some players out here on this empty field. And Miss Turner's class, you're up. Ricky and a bunch of the other kids run out onto the field. Mrs. Rain's walks over to me. Lester? Are you one of the fielders? No. Then why don't you go sit down and watch? Because I'm last. I might not ever get a turn to kick all the way down there. In this game, everyone gets to kick Lester. That's one of the rules. She puts her arm around my shoulder. And besides, if you're at the end, you might just have a chance to make the game winning kick. I step backwards. Superstar is written in the dirt. Look at the ground. She looks down. I'd say that's a pretty good sign, Lester. I take two steps, super star, and another two steps, super star. I ride it all the way over to Abby. Super star, super star, super star, super star. Those shoes are kind of the best, Abby says when I sit down. They're not just kind of the best, they are the best. They even have triple reinforced, a triple reinforced toe box and everything. I hold my foot up. It's the perfect kicking surface. As we sit there and watch the game, I tell Abby more about my shoes and about my kicking experiment and explain how she should kick the ball when it's her turn to kick. And Abby tells me more about Charlie and her Halloween costume and how her mom helped her sew it. By the time the fielders get three outs and it's our turn to kick, it feels kind of like it did back when we used to swing together every day. All right, Ricky says, watch and learn. He runs out to the home plate, and on his way there, he waves at all the kids in the bleacher. bleachers. Olivia, who sits in Michael Z's seat during math, is the pitcher for the other team. Easy out, she yells to her teammates. Yeah, right, Ricky says. You better tell them to back up. But Olivia doesn't tell her team anything. Instead, she throws the ball fast and hard toward Ricky. He runs to meet the ball and kicks it straight into right field in a perfect medium arc not too high and not too low. It flies way past the right fielder's head and doesn't stop until it hits the fence. By the time the ball is almost back to Olivia, Ricky is a few steps away from third base and our class is screaming so loud I have to put my fingers in my ears. Right as Ricky runs past third, Olivia catches the ball, then turns and throws it at him. He jumps back into third right before the ball hits him. Safe, Mr. Marmel yells, and my class cheers again. 
After a few more kickers, there isn't much screaming because most of the people only make it to first or second. And then the other class gets three outs, and then it's their team that's screaming, but that doesn't bother me at all since they're way over on the other side of the field. Abby and I sit there and watch the game. Hey, Lester, Abby says after a while. What? Did you ever make an astronaut costume to go with your dad's helmet? No. Do you want to? If you had a costume, then you could go trick-or-treating. Halloween's tonight, Abby. So? She pulls a drawing of me out of her back pocket. It's a picture of me wearing a helmet and a spacesuit and my superstar shoes. I didn't even think of that before. My new shoes are white and puffy, just like space boots. I don't have a suit, Abby. Do you have snow pants and a coat? They're black. Space suits are supposed to be white. Lester, just have your mom take you to the painting store after school and buy one of those white zip-up suits that painters wear. Put that over your coat and snow pants and you've got a space suit. That does sound like it would work. The only thing I haven't figured out yet is gloves, Abby says. My mom has white snow gloves. Lester, that's perfect. Oh, this is just going to be so great. I can't wait to see what you look like. How are you going to see me? When we go trick-or-treating, she says, smiling. We're going together? Well, yeah. I mean, if you want to. No one's ever invited me to go trick-or-treating with them ever before. No one's ever invited me to do anything with them before. Plus, if you come over, you can see Charlie in his pumpkin costume. And I promise he really doesn't cry as much now. I want to say yes, I really do. But Abby is going trick-or-treating with Mona, which means I'd be doing trick-or-treating with Mona, and I'd rather stay home than do that. Abby, I can't. Okay, she says, and looks away. Abby doesn't say anything else, and neither do I. We just sit there and watch the game. Every time our class scores some runs, the other class scores more runs and catches up to us. If I wanted to make a hypothesis about who's going to win that trophy, I wouldn't be able to. The scores are always so close together. Are you mad at me? Abby asks after our class runs out to the field for the fourth time. Is that why you don't want to come tonight? No, I do want to come. I just don't want to go trick-or-treating with Mona. <laughs> me neither. Abby laughs and runs towards me. Lester, she's not coming. But this morning she said, yeah. And she also said that some dumb store-bought wings are better than the ones I made her. So, will you come? The only problem left is mom. Remember what my mom said, Abby? Lester, you're not being an astronaut. You're just dressing up like one. And besides, she gave you your dad's space helmet. Mm, that's true. It's sitting on my dresser right now. And she did tell me the story about superstars last night. She'll say yes, Lester. I know she will. I'll have my mom call her and work out everything. She kicks her foot against the side of my shoe and points out to the field. Our class is running in. Lester, I think it's time. What an exciting game so far, Mr. Marmel says into his megaphone. Mrs. Turner's class is in the lead with 17. Mrs. Rain's class is close behind with 15. And we're in the final inning, kids. Since Mrs. Turner's class kicked first, Mrs. Rain's class gets one more chance. Will they score the three runs they need to win? Or will Mrs. Turner's class hold the lead? It's still anyone's game. Michael H. was the last one to kick. That means there's Tori, then Abby, then me. We need three one runs to win, and I'm third. It's just like Mrs. Rain said. I could make the game-winning kick. Make a prediction, guys. What do you think? You think he's going to do it? I honestly don't know. It's too close to tell. I have no hypothesis. Let's find out. All right. Ricky runs down to our end of the bench and leans down in front of us. Here's what you guys need to do. Just kick it nice and low and get onto base. Then the lineup will start over and I'll kick you all in. You won't need to, Ricky. If Tori and Abby get on base and I get a home run like I did yesterday, we'll have 18 points already. No, Ricky says. Yes, I say. They have 17, so when we get to 18, we win. I know that, muzzle bum. I just... He looks at Abby. <sighs> Never mind. Ricky walks down to his end of the bench. He, sits he doesn't sit down, though. He just stands by the fence at the front of the dugout, staring at me. That was weird, Abby says, even for him. 
Mrs. Rain's class, Mr. Marmel yells from the field. We need a kicker. Tori runs up to home plate. She kicks a low one straight toward third base and makes it safe to first. Then it's Abby's turn. She stands behind the plate and runs to kick the ball, just like I told her. But her foot must have hit it in the wrong place because her kick flies in a high arc in the air straight toward Olivia. But Olivia doesn't catch it. Whew, thank goodness, that would have thrown the whole thing off. It slips out of her hands, bounces off of her foot, and rolls toward home plate. Abby runs to first. Tori runs to second. They're both safe. I press my shoes down into dirt, into the dirt, then lift them up. There it is. Super star. With each step toward home plate, I say the words that my feet are riding. Super star. I go faster. Super star. Super star. And faster. Super star. Superstar, and even faster. Superstar, 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 su stuperstar, Ricky says when I walk by him. More like stupid, sto stupid star. Ooh, sorry guys. Stupid star. I keep on walking out of the dugout and onto the field and Ricky follows right behind me. Stupid star, stupid star, stupid star. He says which, with each step I take. Stop saying that. I turn around and yell at Ricky. Mr. Marmel runs over to us. Ricky, are you trying to get yourself kicked out of this game? No. He looks down at the ground. Then get yourself back to the dugout. Mr. Marmel turns to me and smiles real big. Lester, I believe it is finally your turn to kick. Mr. Marmel walks back towards home plate. I start to follow, but stop when I hear my name. Not Stupid Star, not Muzzle Bum, not Mouse Boy or Baby. Lester, Ricky says again. Yeah, I turn around. Let me do it. Do what? He reaches up and wipes across his eyes with the back of his hand. Ricky's crying? But he shouldn't be sad. We didn't lose the game. In fact, we're about to win. If he hadn't called me stupid star and followed me out here, we probably would have won by now. He takes a step closer to me and talks in a voice so low that I can barely hear it. Just get onto base. Let me kick you guys in. He looks right at me and I look right back at him. Please, he says. Ricky, Mr. Marmel says from behind home plate and points to the dugout. Go. Ricky turns and runs back to the dugout. By the time I get to home plate, my class isn't sitting on the bench anymore. They're standing at the front of the dugout, and they're all cheering for me. Everyone except Ricky. He's in his spot on the end of the bench, leaning his head against the fence and staring at the trophy that Mr. Jacobson's holding. What if Ricky won the science fair instead of you, Mr. Jacobson said yesterday. But that would never happen, I told Mr. Jacobson. I'm the best at science. That's how Ricky feels about kickball. Stop! Wait! I yell right as Olivia swings back her arm and throws the ball. The ball flies out of her hand and bounces off to the side of me, off to the side of me and hits the fence. Oh, come on, Olivia yells. I run and grab the ball. If my foot hits here, the ball flies in a medium perfect arc. If my, hit, if my foot hits too far under, the ball goes really high. So I kick it low. I need to, so to kick it low, I need to kick more on the side of the ball. Lester, can I have the ball, please? Mr. Marmel asks. I hand it to him. I just needed to figure something out real fast. He throws it to Olivia, and right away, she swings her arm back and throws the ball to me. I kick a little higher up on the ball than I usually do, and as soon as it leaves my foot, I know I kicked in the exact right place. The ball flies low and bounces right between the two kids playing first and second base. It doesn't stop rolling until it gets to the right fielder. Tori runs, Abby runs, I run. The right fielder grabs the ball and throws it into Olivia, but by the time the ball gets to her, we're all on base, safe. They're not cheering for me anymore. Michael Z even has his arms crossed like he's mad at me, but that's because he doesn't understand. He never understood. Kickball isn't my thing. It's Ricky's. And with the winning run on first, Mr. Marmel yells into his megaphone, we'll start the lineup again. 
Ricky, you're up. Ricky runs up to home plate. A few seconds later, we're all chanting his name. Even some of the kids in the bleachers are doing it. Olivia turns around and yells to her team to back up. Everyone in the outfield takes a few steps backwards. Ricky stands behind home plate and leans over a little. As soon as Olivia pitches, he starts running and kicks the ball in a perfect medium arc, way above Olivia's head and over the center fielder's head, and it's going farther than any kick I've ever seen before, even mine. Lester, go! Ricky screams. I was watching his kick and forgot to run, again. Lester! I fling my legs out in front of me and pump my arms. The little pillows in my shoes spring me forward with each step. I touch second base, then run toward third. I look back for a split second. Ricky's right behind me. Keep going, he screams. We touch third, then it's straight down the third base baseline to home plate. I step on it. Ricky steps on it. And all of a sudden, we're jumping up and down, me and Ricky and Abby and Tori, and we're jumping and screaming. And then the rest of the class comes out of the dugout, and we're all jumping and screaming together. Finally, Mr. Marmel yells into his megaphone and says, we have to stop so we can get our trophy. We line up across the center of the field in our kicking order, and Mr. Jacobson brings the trophy onto the field. He hands the trophy to Ricky first, then Ricky passes it to Connor, and Connor passes it to Michael Z, and everyone passes it down the line so we all get to hold it. Finally, it gets to me. There's no one else to pass it on to, so I just hold it up over my head. Mr. Marmel sets his megaphone on the ground and starts clapping. Then Mrs. Rain starts clapping, and Mr. Jacobson, and everyone in the stands, and everyone in my class, even Ricky. Getting a little teary-eyed here, guys. All right, that was the end of that chapter. <sighs> wow. So let's talk for just a second. I know this video is getting a little long. I'm not going to make it much longer. But what a statement to Lester's character. Lester probably could have hit that home run. Lester probably could have scored the three points. We know he knew how to do it. But Lester was the bigger person and the more compassionate person. And he said, you know what? This means more to Ricky than it means to me. Ricky has his struggles and Ricky has his strengths and kickball is Ricky's strengths. So I'm gonna let Ricky get that winning kick. And in doing that, Lester gifted that to Ricky. And sometimes the hardest gifts to give are to the people who we feel maybe don't necessarily deserve it, but we do it anyway because it's the right thing to do. And how much does that tell us about Lester's character traits, that he was willing to sacrifice that big moment and give it to Ricky? Just love that and love the ending. Love that everyone still at the end could clap and appreciate Lester in that moment as he held that trophy. All right, guys, we'll pick back up. We'll finish this book tomorrow. The next chapter is titled Costume, and I will get to that as soon as I can for you guys tomorrow and get that posted. All right, I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. I hope you finished up all your schoolwork and you have some free time. I know we had some rain and some nasty weather this morning, but it's all cleared up now, so I hope you get outside. All right, guys, I'll check in with you later. Bye, have a great night.